everyone, this is Sean. Welcome back to my channel. Please do me a favor and press the thumbs up button. Subscribe, share, comment. I'm always looking forward to the dialogue. I appreciate all of you. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to properly draw from the holster. This video is helpful for those of you who work armed private security. Also, if you own a security company, maybe you're the manager of a security company or a supervisor, you can show this video to your staff. Also, if you are a line staff member, meaning you're not a supervisor, well, you could be a supervisor, but you're not a manager, and you find this video helpful, send this video to your partners. I'm going to show you today how to properly draw from the holster. I keep watching all of these YouTube videos, TikTok. There's some videos on Facebook, Instagram. I see private security officers drawing from the holster and I want to just show a different way. I don't want to say it's the correct way. I don't want to say it's the best way, but it's a method that has been used for a long time. A little bit about my background, if you don't know already, I am a post instructor. That means that I can qualify sworn peace officers with pistols, rifles, and shotguns. I can create the four hour course, an eight hour course, a two day course, be able to print out a certificate and enter a post control number. I'm also a BSIS firearm instructor. BSIS stands for the Bureau of Security Investigative Services. I can qualify armed private security personnel in the state of California. You might be asking, Sean, where did I learn this technique that I'm about to show you? In sometime around two years ago, I attended the gun sight pistol 250 course. And I also attended the gun sight instructor development course. That's a 40 hour course. Both courses put together, it's 80 hours of training. Gun sight is the world's largest training facility for firearms. This is where Lieutenant Jeff, Jeff Cooper created the modern gunfighting techniques. This is where the, the proper draw from the holster was created. This is where it was fine tuned, but that was the place and that's where I went. So this is where I'm gaining that, this is where I'm, this is where I gain the knowledge and now presenting it to you. So first things first, Weapons need to be safe all the time, especially when you are presenting in front of a camera and to an audience. So we're gonna render the weapon safe. Now I did render it safe before I turn on the camera, but I'll do it again. Okay, there's no magazine in the well of the weapon. I'm going to lock the slide to the rear. I'm going to visually and physically inspect for any cartridges and there's nothing in the chamber, okay? Firearm is safe. We want to make sure that there are no magazines on us as well, there's no ammunition. So let's take a visual look, okay? Here's my magazine pouches. There's no ammunition anywhere, okay? Do a 360 degree for you guys. Okay, now we're safe. What I see on camera with a lot of private security officers is this. They're quick drawing and then I'm seeing this. Okay, they don't have that master grip. They have all this wiggle room right here. What I want you to concentrate on when I draw is my support hand. And by the way, I'm right-handed. That's the correct hand. I'm just kidding for those of you who are left-handed. But what you see is this arm comes up. So concentrate on this arm, not necessarily the draw here, okay? So it comes up like this, and then they're up like this. And then some of them, you'll see the teacup method. If I see this, that's an unsubscribe for me. Um, if I see, if I see this, the hand coming up, okay, it's maybe not that much of a big issue, but it's something to think about. So you just saw me draw, and you just saw this support hand come up. What they teach at Gunsight is something that's a little bit different. So it's going to be a five-step draw. First step of the draw is this. It's one, hand goes here at the same time, hand right on the master grip. And master grip, you're basically 
creating a stern handshake on the gun and your the web of your hand is up high here all the way up here just right here okay not like this but all the way up here this is your master grip so at the same time while you're doing this okay you're pressing the safety lever down and forward meanwhile you're gripping the gun master grip okay so just like this Number two, you bring it, you bring your firearm right out of the holster. So just like this, okay? Number three, look at the muzzle. It's gonna be in your direction. Three, like this. Four, we call smack. And that's where your support hand meets in hand. For lack of a better term, the grip hand, this hand. Where the support hand meets this hand. So just like this. Yeah, do it again by the numbers. Okay. So one, two, three, and four is smack. Four. From this position, I can actually fire if I needed to. My sights are right on target. See that it may not necessarily be to my eye level, but they're still on target. I can pull the trigger from right here if I needed to. I could stop the threat if I needed to right here, but I'm right here, okay? And then four, okay, you're punching it out about right here. And then five, eyes. So eyes are right on target. I can shoot right here if I need to at number four or five. And I can also disengage with the target from here. Show you again by the numbers. One, two, three, four, and five. Why the hand right here? Why would you have your support hand up here rather than right here? Well, up here, okay, this support hand, you're already in position. So look. <laughs> One, okay, two, three, four, and five. Watch this hand, okay? Look how close this hand is to this hand. Keep it here again, okay? One, two, three, four, and five. It's already up here. Now, if I have to bring it up from up here, okay, I'm not being as efficient with my time. So if I just do this, okay, I'm, lo I'm losing those fractions of a second. And I know that they're fractions of a second, but in a lethal force encounter, those fractions of a second actually count. In private security, this technique is especially helpful because we do a lot of work from right here. We have an aggressive subject that's away from us. Our hands should be around right here so that we can protect our face, we can protect our neck, and then some of this area up here. But we're, we're right here. And it also looks good. Like, hey, look, I don't want any problems. I just need you to step back, but don't come forward. You're gonna have some problems and I don't want any problems with you. I want this to end peacefully. But look, all the talking from right here. You're already in position one from right here. From right here. I mean, you're not exactly in position one because position one would be right here. But look, you're right, you're right here. Or do you start like this? If you're engaging in an argument with somebody or a confrontation with somebody, do you want your support hand right here? Or do you want it up here? Like, hey, I don't want any problems. Just step back right here, okay? You're taking notes. You went to the scene of a crime that happened on your, on your premises and you're taking some notes because your job entails report writing. You're, are you report writing with one hand like this? I'm sorry, you're taking notes like this. Oh, get your notepad over here. Or even if you have a smart device and that's how you take notes, up here. Hopefully not up here, but you're up here. If all of a sudden that person pulls a knife on you or some other deadly instrument, 
you're already close to position one, okay? You're here. And then what I see on social media is that when a security officer shows on camera that he or she just shot the target, they're showing some urgency to put the gun back in the holster. So it might look something like this. Bang, bang, bang. Let me try to do it a little faster. Bang, bang, bang. My question to you as a private security professional, what is the urgency to get the gun back in the holster? Because you're taking the gun out because there's a potential lethal threat. Maybe there's a threat to great bodily injury to yourself or other people. That's why you're taking the gun out in the first place. But what is the need to holster that fast? You have to remember that sometimes during a critical incident, some, something might fall in the holster. And if you're putting it away that fast, you're not able to feel if there's some type of friction against right here. Okay, your, your gun can go off very easily if there's something if there's something in there. Okay, that's how a lot of people get shot is they holster really fast when there's something in there. So I'm telling you guys, if you get into a fight with somebody, your pencil will fall. You guys know what I'm talking about. Your pencil will fall out. Your pen, your name tag, your name plate, if you have it, it'll fall out in the most weirdest places and it could fall into the holster. In about 23 years of carrying a firearm and securing law enforcement, I think I have something stuck in the holster two times. It's a, it's, a, it's a rare day when that happens, but it's happened to me before. So there should be no urgency. Now in law enforcement, there's a little bit of urgency to get the gun back in the holster because you're taking somebody out of gunpoint, all of a sudden that person puts away that lethal weapon, um, or maybe you're doing a building search, you find somebody, or you're clearing an, alley, an alleyway or something like that. It was a lethal situation, now it isn't, and then that person takes off running away. Well, now the urgency is to pursue that person, run after that person. And I could see why there's some type of urgency to get the gun back in the, in, to get the gun back in the holster. I, I can see it. But when you're working security, should you be running after people? And that's my question to you is in most circumstances, your primary job is to observe and report. Is it to chase people and effect an arrest? That depends on your SOPs. But most of the time, again, if you're armed private, even armed private security, observe and report. Remember, you don't have the abilities that law enforcement has. You can't, you can't send in the air unit to set a perimeter. You can't call five different units to start setting containment. And you don't have the ability most of the time to enforce, enforce the law of property, okay? You don't have the ability to enter into people's backyards and invade their space when you are private security. I'm, I mean, law enforcement, you know, again, it's a, it's a frowned upon thing though, if you're jumping over fences to effect an arrest, but it's going to lead, if you're chasing somebody down other people's backyards, there's less repercussions as a law enforcement officer than as a security officer. So there's, there's really not that urgency to put it back in the whole set fast. What you wanna do is put the gun back slowly and deliberately, but you wanna scan first. So I have somebody at gunpoint, there's a legal reason for me to point my gun at that person or orient, orient the gun in their direction, okay? I'm going to first, okay, before I put this gun back in the holster, do a quick scan, okay? Even if that person's in front of me because there could be a, a friend, a buddy, a homie, right here, right here, right there. So as long as I know that that person's hands are in the air, um, on top of his head, maybe I prone him out on the floor, I had him cross his legs, had him face away from me. I, for splits of a second, I can do this. Okay, as long as the threat in front of me is not greater than the threat that's around me, and, and that can be very difficult to ascertain, actually. So what I'm doing before I, I put the gun back in the holster, I'm doing a quick scan, okay? Moving off the X a little bit. Be careful with muzzling your gun in that direction. There could be witnesses, bystanders, and you don't have a legal reason to flag in that direction, muzzle, muzzle in that direction. So right before I put it away, okay, my support hand goes back in here. I can look, that's fine, and then holster up. 
Then there's the issue of should I look in my holster. When I started the police academy in 2001, it was a no-no to look at your holster and I was able to do that just by muscle memory. Um, now, I mean, my shape has changed. So I do see myself looking. I don't think looking is a bad idea. Now, if there's a deadly threat, if the argument is there's still a deadly threat, well, my argument to you is why are you, why is your gun going back in the holster if there's still a, a deadly threat? To those of you who are wrong-handed, I'm just kidding, left-handed, how would you do the draw? It's been a long time. Honestly, I've done this draw once, two years ago, left-handed. So let me show you how it would work. And I have to un-F myself. <laughs> so it would look something like this. Okay, so that your step one would be this, one, okay, one, two, three, smack, four, and then five is look. Let me do that one more time for you lefties. One, two, three, smack four, five. So that's how it would look. I'm putting it back in this holster. So that's all I have today. Let me know what you guys think about this video, comments. Looking forward to the discussion. Take care, guys, and please be safe.